Holy Ghost, I'm so grateful, God, you know you did the most. We're so thrilled to have you here today to join us on our very first episode. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Jonesboro, Arkansas, but I've been in Columbus, Mississippi for several years. Um, my background was really not of the church. I was kind of a person that uh, came from a Methodist background. But when I moved to Mississippi, I, start, I was introduced to the apostolic or holiness churches. So from then, um, I kind of found my way to holiness and God just began to do a work in me. After that, I met a very special guy in my life. And that very special guy would be me, Dr. Michael Lowe. I am originally from Columbus, Mississippi. Uh, I come from the formal life of a street thug. I came to know Christ at age 19. I am 41 and I prayed and asked God uh, at that time that I was converted to send me that very special woman, which is my lovely wife here, Dr. Kimberly Lowe. And I thank God, amen, for the journey that we have been on 20 something years. And we're here today, amen, excited about sharing that experience with you all. Let's tell the people a little bit about like how we met. You know, we talked about how we, you know, we had our different backgrounds. But I guess tell me your take on it because both of our takes are kind of a little different. You know, we both had the experience, but we're two different individuals. So tell me what. Let's let the people know what your experience was. Well, my experience was uh, me coming from being a former gang uh, banger, coming from the streets, a thug. I originally uh, had no background in the church. I didn't come from the church world. So uh, once I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, I also had a praying mother. So I believe that, you know, the prayers of the righteous availed much. And through her prayers, I believe that it also um, played a, a very important part in me receiving the gospel when I heard the gospel and I ended up getting uh, born again, and immediately, wasn't even three months after my conversion that I began to pray and ask God for a wife. And I was very specific with God concerning the type of wife that I desired. I prayed and told the Lord to send me a more mature, uh, older woman. And it happened so fast, within, I would say, two week time, and I thought it was the devil that was answering my prayers. But uh, it turned out that it was my blessing or my prayer being answered uh, in a way that it didn't come in the way I expected it to come because it happened so fast. But I thank God that he sent my uh, gift wrapped up in packaging that I didn't expect. Awesome. So, so do you think it's very important to pray? When you're looking and seek God before you just go and get married? I believe that's very important because prayer should be the foundation for uh, anything that you're going to do because the scripture tells us to acknowledge him in all of our way yeah. and he will direct our path. So this legend LLC presents a high five on us. You may ask why, but here's a news flash for you. Yeah, for you. Are you writing a new book? Or... Do you have a new song you've been wanting to produce? Okay. If so, then this major alert is for you. Don't get caught up in the gambling like a slot machine with the talents. Don't you want to be happy on purpose? <laughs> well, we want to see you happy as well. You may ask, what all do we do? We are for author, film, and artist services, and online clothing. And oh yeah, bookstores. We extend the hands so that you can bear witness 
So your greatness in the bulk of your legacy today. Find us today online at www.winslating.com. Get introduced to our team and our project. We deliver no peace and no soup out. So if you're looking to inspire and train the teams, we need to legend has it. That's it. Okay, guys, we're back. We want to pick back up where we left off. We're talking about do God pick your mate? When we say mate, we're talking about your um, husband or wife or the person that you're going to marry. And as we were saying before the break, that we do believe that God is very much involved yes. in picking your mate and we gave a few scriptures on there. We believe God is involved in picking your mate because as a child of God, we believe that God is very much willing to be involved in every aspect of your life that you're willing to allow him to be in. Yes, um, So um, I said, you know, I believe God picked your mate. You know, uh, a man has 24 ribs, 24. And in Genesis, God put the man into a deep sleep. And the Bible says that when he put him into a deep sleep, God took one of his bones mm. and he shaped it, he framed it, and built the woman. Now, God could have took any one of them, 24 bones, he could have picked any one, but it was one that he selected. Mm, that's good. It was one. If he wanted a man to have two wives, he could have pulled two bones. Wow. If he wanted a man to have three wives, why did he pull three ribs from him? And build three women and say, Here, Adam, they get three women. He only pulled one. He pulled one. Mm -hmm. And the reason he picked that one, because he had in mind a helper suitable for this man. And he put inside, I want you to get this. Mm -hmm. What was inside of that woman, the reason why God had to put the man to sleep? And we're talking about picking your man. I believe. Adam was wholly complete. And when God put him to sleep, not only when he took the bone from the man's side, the Hebrew says the bone. You know, we look at King James, it says the rib. Right. But when he took the bone, or the rib, if you want to, out of the man's side, I think that what he built the woman with, everything he built this woman with came from that man while he was sleeping. He took some of his flesh. Yes. I believe that he took out of the man what he put in the man, and that's what he used to build the woman. Because everything God told Adam, Adam represented humanity. Yes. Think about it. There's not a woman on this earth that didn't come from a man. That's right. You got a daddy. How did you get here? So you came out of the man the same way Eve came out of Adam. Right. So God took that bone or that rib from that man's side. He built a woman. He presented this woman to Adam. I believe just like I just used that um, biblical uh, picture, I believe God, because it wouldn't be fair for him to make Adam a wife. Right. A suitable, built Adam one. Right. And I'm no greater than me because I'm in Christ. That's right. Why would he do that for Adam? But then tell us, oh, when y'all find y'all alone. Yes. No. God is very much involved, but the problem would be we have to ask ourselves, do we want what God wants for us? Today's episode is going to be about, is marriage an assignment? Is marriage an assignment? What do you think about that? I believe according to the word, marriage is an assignment. It's work. Right. We want to get into this uh, briefly. And uh, I want to start it off by coming from uh, scripture, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, 31 through 32. I'm not going to quote the whole scripture, I'm just going to give, um, paraphrase what it talks about. And it talks about, for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. I believe that marriage is an assignment. Because this verse here ties in to Genesis 2 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. We have to look back. The book of Genesis is the law uh, um, of beginnings. It's where if you, uh, the law first mentioned. Where if you want to know where something was first said, you go back to Genesis. And when, when you go to Genesis and you find out in the book of Genesis, this is where it was first mentioned. 
you're usually going to find this the understanding of the purpose for it. So when we look back in Genesis, we see that before God even created uh, Adam a help me, a helper suitable for him, he had created the man and gave the man an assignment. And when he looked, he said that it's not good that man should be alone. So I will make him a helper suitable for him. So I just want to uh, talk about that right here in this episode that when we look at God looking at Adam, Adam didn't know what a wife was. True. It was all God's idea. He created the man and God had a purpose in mind for creating Adam. And I believe that the wife was also in God's mind to be created to assist the man in the assignment that God had for the man. That's right. And I believe that God creates everything with purpose. He does nothing just to do it. Everything he does, he attached the purpose to it. So when he created Adam, he created Adam for a reason. And one of the main reasons I believe God created man, he created Adam, was for relationship and fellowship. So when God created this man, Adam, man in spirit, when he created him, God lavished love on this man. And this love that God lavished on this man, Adam, when he seen that Adam was whole, complete, Adam didn't lack nothing within himself. But when God looked at the full picture, something was missing. Yes. And what is this that was missing? Adam didn't know something was missing. But because God already knew what he had in mind, it was something else that belonged in the picture that wasn't in the picture. Mm. And God said, it's not good that this man should be alone. Why? Because I believe God saw the assignment that I have given him. He's going to need a helper. He's going to need someone that he can share the same love and affection that I have shared with him. He can lavish it on her. Yes. And I believe that that's one of the purposes why God created. He put the man to sleep. He took a bone from his side and he built, that's what it says in the Hebrew, he shaped or built a woman and he presented her to the man mm. for the purpose of her being able to receive the love and the affection yes. that God had lavished on Adam. It was to be shown to the woman. So, I believe that marriage is an assignment, and the assignment is for marriage to reflect the relationship that God has with man and also that Christ has with the church. important things uh, that we want to discuss today on this episode about dating is you want to court, I want to say courting, you want to court with purpose of marriage or date with the intentions of marriage and, it, and that's more called courtship. So we want to deal, uh, we want to get into that. Uh, one of the reasons we want to get into it uh, because that's, some, that's something that we mentioned in the book that you want to be able to not waste time dating with no real intentions of it going anywhere. You know, a lot of people have wasted time. Singles have wasted time with dating, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five years, you know, with one person or different individuals. 
and all that has come out of that was nothing but ungodly soul ties. Right, because you know, in this day and time, um, the millennials, they're not into courting. They're into dating multiple people. Um, they It's like they want to see what they're getting into. And I've talked to a lot of people and they were like, well, how, how are we going to know who we like if we only date one person? Now, back in the day in courting, you were dating with the intentions of getting married to that one person. Exactly. And whatever needed to be uh, fixed, you would work on it. And then when you get married, that would be your spouse. But now in today's time, I think we need to talk about how people, they want to make sure, and I do understand uh, making sure that you're marrying the right person. It is some things that we talk about in the book, um, the red flags to look for when you're dating and different things that you, um, questions that you need to ask. But a lot of people um, have said, and I've heard them tell me that, you know, how do I know if I'm going to be fulfilled sexually if I don't date a lot of different people? But there is um, dangers danger in dating a lot of different people and having sex with a lot of different people. Exactly. So that's what, you know, let's start with that so people can know that, yes, you know, you got to get to know a person, but it's dangerous. It, it, it causes, like you were saying, soul ties to be sleeping around with all these different people just trying to see because what happens if you sleep around with all these different people and you're still not satisfied exactly and again as we look at uh we want to start here with soul ties this and we mentioned this in the book as you look at a un soul ties um are fine as long as they're not ungodly soul ties right and that's what happens when you uh have any kind of sexual intercourse with a person that you're not married to it forms what is called an ungodly soul tie right and an ungodly soul tie is where your soul has been knitted together emotionally um soulishly with another person you have been intertwined with that you're not married to right and just like the scripture says that the threefold cord a threefold cord is not easily broken that third person in that marriage is Christ. Exactly. Now, when you're not married to the person, that third person in that relationship, when you form an ungodly soul tie, is an evil spirit. And that spirit is there to hold you together emotionally, mentally, soulishly to this person through ungodly sexual relationships. Now, right. what's the danger in this? Because you're not married, what happens is, this is what leads to heartbreak. Yes. You're being hurt, uh, you're, you're, you're being rejected and, and going through all types of trauma and pain and uh, different forms of uh, the after effect of being, having your heart broke, the depression stages, exactly. suicidal, yes. and all of this comes as a result of you having your heart broken because of an ungodly soul tie that was formed. Right. And that's so true because especially if you're dating with the intentions on getting married. So if you're dating all these different guys how are you preserving yourself or how are you uh, preparing yourself for the one um, that you're going to marry if you're in intertangled and intertwined with everybody else? So just say for um, example purposes, you meet Jody or you meet Susie and um, they don't turn out to be who you thought they were and they break your heart. So you meet Jeff or you meet uh, Jane. So your heart is so broken and your soul is so attached to the previous person that now you're not free to love who God sends you or who exactly. you start dating now. So that's the danger of, of, of multiple relationships because your feelings get involved and you end up getting hurt and you can't give yourself fully yes. to your spouse if you meet us, you know, meet your spouse or to the person that you're dating. That 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 happens a lot of times because if we do it the way that it was biblically uh, made to do from the beginning, it was only made for you to have one spouse. Exactly. And we know that in this day and time, divorces happen. Uh, people just don't believe in, in, in just having um, just one person, being faithful to one person. But again, it brings forth so many different things that you start to deal with that you're not able to handle that. So when you're getting um, ready to get engaged or get married, you're supposed to set yourself aside solely for that purpose of that person. 
you're not to be going around dating and getting entangled with all these other different people. We're going to talk about forgiveness and how to move on past forgiveness. Before I get started, I want to give you the definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness means to make a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment towards someone that has hurt you. Now, to me, this is a very, very sensitive subject because sometimes it's not easy to forgive people. Right. Sometimes it's not easy to let go, even though you know it's the right thing to do. So I have to constantly tell myself, if I don't forgive people that have offended me, it, it doesn't make me any better than they are. Like, I'm just as bad as they are for hurting me. So I just think that a lot of people don't know how to forgive properly or a lot of people struggle with forgiving. So can you tell me an instance or just give us an example of one thing or one time that you had to forgive someone and it was rough? And how did you move past that? Because a lot of people, you know, they say, I'll forgive, but I'm not going to forget. And they don't truly, honestly forgive, you know, with the intent of letting it go. So do you have an example of, 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 of a time that someone has hurt you or something has happened that you need to forgive someone? Well, um, I have had many instances where uh, forgiveness was necessary in order uh, not just for them, it was also for me. You know, um, I like to use illustrations when I, you know, say certain things. For example, if I was to, if an individual was to cut their hand um, on a, on something, they was to cut their hand, and it's, you know, it's bleeding, but it's not as deep, you know, it's not real deep, but, you know, they're bleeding. And maybe a couple of days, it's healed. Okay, but if someone was to have fall onto a, something real sharp like a knife or something like that and it penetrates deeper then that's not going to heal in a few days I use that to show how some things are more easier to forgive that's than true. others that's true. and the reason why we must forgive and I'm going to say the reason why God told us to forgive is because uh, one scripture tells us and I believe it's over in the book of Ephesians where it said give no place to the devil and I think that might be Ephesians 4, 27, uh, you know, might be wrong on that. But give no place to the devil. The reason why I believe that God tells us to forgive because if we don't forgive, it opens up a door where the enemy can get an advantage over us. Yes. And that unforgiveness can turn into anger, bitterness. And, bitterness. and, you know, the scripture tells us that when bitterness has set in, then all other different types of form of evil uh, comes about. So uh, I have had uh, many instances uh, where I had to forgive, just to name a uh, few, it's just, you know, uh, relationships where I have been betrayed in relationships, uh, um, you know, uh, not only betrayed, but, you know, once you put your guards down in relationships and you trust the person uh, and they go off and do something that you never expected them to do. I would say that's that deep wound that that knife can cause. And, you know, healing, sometimes you can wait on healing. Just like with that scratch, it'll heal in a couple of days. Right. But a deep wound, sometimes it takes longer. So um, having to forgive, I want to say that depending on how deep the wound is, you cannot, even though you forgive a person, that, that's not going to actually fix the damage that's done. It takes the power of God to help you move on because we are talking about you know forgiveness and being able to move on. Yeah. So even after you have forgiven a person, that it takes the power of God to help you to forgive yes. and be able to move on. Yes, And it's so easy to say, well, you should forgive because the word of God says you, that you should forgive. But when you're in the midst of that, Exactly. You don't want to forgive. If you be honest, you don't want to forgive because you want that person to feel the same kind of hurt, the same kind of pain that they made you feel. So, you know, just telling a person, you just need to forgive them. You just need to let that go. Exactly. That's not always easy. It takes prayer. It takes yes. it takes willpower. It takes you wanting to forgive them. It takes, you know, you when you see them, 
you not wanting to snap on them because you remember, especially when it's as deep as you're saying, like a knife penetrating. Exactly. So everything can't just be, you know, even as coaching, you know, well, you know, just forgive. We can't just be so quick. We have to take people through the process of forgiving. Forgiving is a process. That's it. That's it. Because most people That's I found it. that they don't forgive, they just suppress. Uh-huh. They suppress their feelings. They suppress the pain. And then once um, they see that person, once they begin to see that person, it you know it flares back up. It begins to um, the the way that they treated them begins to flare back up, and they begin to have all these different emotions and all these different feelings because they didn't fully forgive. Exactly, and even when uh, goes back to something that you said, even when it comes down to forgiveness, you know it's easy for people to just tell a person, yeah. uh, you know, forgive. Yeah. But if you have not been through that experience yourself, you yes. know, uh, talk is cheap. You know, it, it's more easier said than done because, again, forgiveness is a process and all healing doesn't take place overnight. And I want to say forgiveness is not even the hard part about it wow. because once you forgive a person, it's just like, again, if I can use the, um, the example of someone, if someone was to cut you and it was deep, okay, you might say, they might say, well, I'm sorry. And you say, okay, I forgive you. Okay, it was an accident, I forgive you. But every time you feel that pain, it's going to remind you of what caused that pain. Yes. And if yes. you have to live with that person or be there with that individual, yes. then the enemy, you have to be careful because the enemy will try to turn that um, pain, he'll try to bring you back to a place where you feel like, you know, you shouldn't forgive that person. Right. So, I think that when there's pain involved, because all, you know, when you have to forgive people, all forgiveness doesn't involve pain. Some people can do something to you that it didn't personally hurt you. So when it comes down to the pain of, of oneself, I believe that the key thing to forgiveness is being able to operate in the love of God, allow Christ to forgive through you. Yeah. Because uh, if you damage my truck, uh, someone damaged my truck, you know, okay, I forgive that. You know, you scratch my truck, I forgive that. That's, those are things on the outside of you. But when you have to forgive an individual for hurting you, yes. then it's on a whole nother level. Yes. And that's where you have to allow God. You know, you can't just do it through willpower. Yes. You have yes. to allow God to help you go through that process of forgiveness. Hi, I'm Dr. Kimberly Rowe. I'm Dr. Michael. We'd like to welcome you to Hold That Ministry. Where the foundation of this ministry is First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23, where we minister to the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you for watching. Let's stay together. Until next time, let's, let's stay, stay together. together.